question. Uh, when... You in the back up here, Cindy and all of you move in the back. All right, welcome back everyone. If you can mute your um, microphones, if you're not actively speaking, please. We have, we still have a few that are joining us. So if we will just wait a couple of minutes before we get started again. Mm. Mm, it. I got muted too. Um, I'd like to unmute Dr. Jones as well. So uh, we'd like to welcome Dr. Gareth Jones, who's going to talk to you about writing personal statements. And just uh, t as a reminder, you're, um, and Dr. Jones, so you know that the students are gonna revamp their personal statements and they're gonna work with their mentors um, to improve their statements as they go through the course. So we're gonna give feedback to them. So that can be based on what you also talk about today. So thank you very much for joining us and uh, I'll hand it over to you. Well, thank you so much. I just wanna thank uh, everyone involved with this incredible program for inviting me back. And I just gotta say, I just found out how many of uh, students are participating and you're from all over the country. It's a real honor to spend some time with you and, and have you listen to my words. I hope uh, they're helpful for you. Uh, I really enjoy giving this uh, presentation. I, I really am passionate about personal statements, so um, I'm, I'm hopeful this will be helpful for you. Just format-wise, I'm going to share my screen here in just a minute. We'll have, I'll talk for about 30, 35 minutes, and then we'll have some good interaction time, hopefully some good Q&A. Uh, I want to be very mindful of your time because I know you have a full day and you have other sessions. So we're going to try our very best to end this right at 12.45, so you have 15 minutes before the next session. Although I say 12.45, that's central time. I'm sure you're all at different times that you're all over the place. So again, thank you for joining me. All right. Well, again, uh, thank you for being part of this. You know, your personal statement, and it's so this is such an invaluable process that you're going through this summer on writing a personal statement, developing a personal statement, getting a draft, working on it, getting feedback. These are all such important things. So I just want to say that uh, I'm so glad that you're all here. So first off, you know, we all have kind of a, a, a definition of a personal statement or things pop in our head when we hear that. This is the definition from the Yale College uh, Writing Center. And I'll just read this out just so everyone hears it. Uh, the graduate school personal statement is your opportunity to convey what you might like to be as a future colleague and professional within your discipline. It is a chance to articulate the passion that will make you a motivated scholar and teacher, as well as your familiarity with the field and your potential research interests. So it's much different than uh, the initial letter you would write to get into a college or a university. It definitely is connecting the dots for these folks at the next level, whether it's professional school, medical school, or if it's a graduate school. You are t uh, you're convincing them. You are telling your story, your personal story. And, and again, I, I, I can't emphasize this enough. This is your opportunity to tell your story. And I'm going to talk a little bit about that. So one thing that I want to just kind of, before I go too much further, is just tell you a little bit more about myself. Um, so I have worked at uh, the University of Alabama at Birmingham for nearly five years. I'm the assistant director in the Office of Service Learning and Undergraduate Research. What that means is I facilitate, promote, and support both faculty, staff, and undergraduate students in developing and finding research opportunities. So this could be in the form of having a faculty fellowship where I help faculty develop courses that offer undergraduate research and also learn how to be better mentors. It can be offering workshops like this to students to give them better information and develop them as they prepare to enter a research position. It's also overseeing a, a group of wonderful peers, the undergraduate research ambassadors who help you find opportunities and can give you great peer mentor advice. 
So all, a lot of different things that our office does, we have travel grants, all sorts of wonderful things that we do to help support students and faculty develop undergraduate research positions. In addition to that though, my background before that was I was a film studies professor and I still am. I still teach film classes uh, at UAB in, uh, in the Honors College. And uh, so my, my passion is also really teaching film. And I, I tell people this, they, they ask, well, what does that mean? I don't write screenplays, I don't uh, produce films, I don't direct films, I just love to talk about movies, <laughs> all right? And so I've studied them, I've learned the history, analysis, theory of how film works, and I'd like to apply this to this idea of a personal statement, because I like to compare a personal statement to a trailer for a film, because it requires something called a hook. A personal statement needs something that pulls the reader in and makes them want to read more and learn more about that person. Just like when you watch a trailer for a movie that pulls you in, makes you interested in the film, and then convinces you to pay money to see that film. And that's a really valuable process. And so in many ways, your personal statement is the trailer for the interview, which is the film, right? So that you are telling, you're giving them a, a little snippet of who you are. And so you have to come up with a creative way of pulling them in because all of these different uh, professional schools and, and medical schools and graduate schools, they read, you know, the thousands of personal statements and a lot of them look the same because people feel like there's kind of a checklist. And I'm going to give you certain things to talk about but they kind of go through a basic checklist and a lot of them are exactly the same. So it's really important to distinguish it. And that, that's why I really like to emphasize the hook and your specific personal hook. For some reason, my screen is not advanced in there. Let's try here. All right, so your audience. The people who are going to be reading your personal statement. So this gives you a quick list and you can read through this and think about how what maybe you've written already or what you're planning to write, whether your personal statement has these elements. Okay, so I want to emphasize a couple of things here that uh, I think are specifically important. I, I already talked about uniqueness because this is your story. You know, it's one thing to say I did research in a cancer lab, but if you can expand upon that and talk about how that connects to your story and what you want to do in your future career, that takes what is a more universal experience and makes it unique and be very specific as to, you know, the type of lab and the type of research that you did and how that connects to your personal life journey. That makes it unique. Okay, and then connect it to the passion. They want to see a lot of passion in these personal statements. You know, when you create a resume or a CV, those are fairly passionless, right? They're usually just a list of all of the things that you've accomplished. And everyone has those lists. The personal statement, you can highlight certain things, but it is not a list. It's not just a simple list of the things that you've done. You need to really show your passion. Because as I said, the purpose of this uh, personal statement is to get you into that interview, okay? As I said, they're going to read thousands of these personal statements, these applications, and you need to pull them in with your statement so that you can get into that interview, all right? By answering what is unique about you, what qualifies you specifically for this program? That's another thing you really want to make sure you fine tune your personal statements for the specific programs that you are applying to. You don't have just the simple cut and paste for all of the different programs. Each program is unique. You need to make sure that your personal statement is unique as well. And you need, as I said, it's personal. You need to have experiences that you are relating to them. You also want to make sure that you're responding to the specific question that they may be asking. Some programs have very specific prompts that are asking you to list certain things that they're looking for. Uh, some are more general. Um, so if it's a general one, here's some things that you can think about. You know, why do you want to be what you want to be? This reflection, this introspection is such a vital part of understanding what your undergraduate experience is. I tell students this all the time, or when I meet with them one-on-one, -on -one, I ask them, why do you want to be what you want to be? 
You know, a lot of people that come to UAB say they want to go into the medical field and that's wonderful and that's noble and that's a wonderful thing to do. But you need to really ask why. Why do you want to go into the medical field? Is it something that you're passionately connected to? Or is it something that your parents asked you to do? Is it something that you feel society wants you to do? Is it because you've been told that you can make money in it? Whatever it is, you need to ask yourself why you want to do that. Because you want to be able to connect why you want to do that to the experiences that you've had. Because those experiences that you've had as an undergraduate are helping develop you to be better for that program. So it's really important to think about how all the different things in your life have influenced who you are today. And so your personal statement helps you tell that. It helps convince them that you are a unique person who will bring a specific set of skills and experiences to their program that will make their program better and that you're a good fit. That's really important to think about. It's an NSA format. Uh, it's not completely formal, but it's not informal. Uh, you have to have this hook, and I just talk about that in relation to what a trailer is. The hook can be right at the start to pull someone in. You can have a little bit of an intro and then a hook, but you want to have it fairly soon. When I talk about film and I talk about analyzing short films, for example, you only have a certain amount of time to get the attention of the person watching that film. You need to pull them in. You need to get them emotionally invested. The same thing is true with a personal statement. You need to pull the person in so that they're emotionally invested and want to read more, want to understand more, want to hear more. So start with that hook and then you connect it to the experiences that you've had, your personal background, all those things that have kind of led you to this moment, the present, where you are right now. Okay. So if you're graduating and what your plans are and how then you interweave it with your conclusion, you bring it all together. And I'm going to show you on a slide how to do that, okay, with your conclusion, where you really connect the dots for them. So here's, here's a, a structure for that, all right, the four W's, okay, the who, what, why, and what. So this gives you a nice template or structure that you can use for your personal statement. So at the start, you're going to answer, you have your hook, you're going to answer who you are, you're going to give them a, the rationale, the general information as to why you are applying for that program. Then you're going to get to the middle section. You're going to talk about all the different things that you have done to prepare for this moment. You're going to tell them where you've done this. You're going to tell them when you've done this. And you can see already it goes small in the middle. So we've started at a macro level and then we get to a micro level. So an example of this, say we're, we're all living in the COVID-19 world, right? That's a general thing that's affecting everyone. But how is that affecting you personally, maybe in your path to pursuing a medical career, all right? You could talk about all the different things that you were doing along the way that could be connected to that. Say you want to find a cure for COVID-19. Well, talk about the specific things that you're doing that are connecting for it. So, for example, there's a, an initiative right now from the CGIU, the Clinton Global Initiative University, where they are giving undergraduates funding to do research connected to COVID-19. So that would be a very specific example of a program, what you're doing, when and where, that would pull someone into your story. Okay. Another part of the middle is the why. Okay. So it's not just your accomplishments, but it's why these accomplishments are preparing you for this next step, okay? You could list out a whole bunch of really impressive accomplishments, but that's going to take a, a lot of space, and you want to be very specific and targeted with the type of information that you give, okay, that make you specifically qualified for this program. So think about it in that very specific way. And then the end, again, connecting it to this next program, whatever it may be, grad school, medical school, the hopes that you have. So I'm sure you've already done some kind of exercise at some point in your life where you've talked about your goals and the outcomes that you hope to have out of your undergraduate experience. And then hopefully the goals and outcomes of your postgraduate experience, whatever that may be. And hopefully at the end, of course, you have your ultimate goal you know, the job that you want to have, the career that you want to have. 
And these things need to connect. And sometimes it can be something that you may not necessarily initially think does connect, but it could have been a failure in something. And I'll talk a little bit about that here in a minute, but it can help prepare you for that situation. So be open-minded when you're thinking about the types of accomplishments as well. So the style that you should use, okay, engaging, okay, as I said, it is somewhat formal, but it's still accessible. You can use subjective language, for example. You can talk about I and mine and those types of words, right, because you're pulling them in and you want, as I said, right at the start, your passion needs to show. Okay. You also need to be aware of what your accomplishments are and maybe your limitations. You need to be aware of where you fit in this path so that you can connect these dots and then show them your commitment. Um, so again, thinking about specific examples from your life, experiences that you've had, accomplishments that exhibit a full-time commitment. Those are things, things where you've persevered or you've overcome obstacles and you stayed committed to the goal. So the flow of it. Um, so you hook the audience with your wonderful hook. You get them in. You pull that audience in. Again, think about some of your favorite trailers you've seen for films. Okay, and trailers. So again, they'll have something very kind of sometimes shocking at the start, right? Like even with sound effects, like boom, 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 pull you right in. And, but it still is presenting a character or an idea, a concept, and it always circles back by the end of the trailer. And the same thing is going to be true for your personal statement, that you're going to circle back and connect the dots so that it doesn't have it, so that it's cohesive, so that things don't seem disjointed. Everything that in, is in a personal statement needs to have a valid reason to be there. So you're talking one to two pages, and it has to be concise and precise to convince the people to go to the next stage of giving you an interview. One way to really connect the things and connect the dots is to read it aloud. So hopefully that's an exercise you're doing this summer. I know we're in the world of Zoom right now, but we all have wonderful people that we can share things with. Um, and I'm even happy to hear things, <laughs> you know, through, through, uh, through Zoom. Uh, but read it aloud, see how it sounds, see how it connects. Practice reading it aloud. You'll hear things in a different way. Uh, you'll see if maybe you're not being formal enough or if you're being uh, too formal. You wanna have a good, Kind of, and that it all fits together. So reading it aloud is an important part of that process. Because it will be a process, okay? As you go through this, you're going to think about all the different re, uh, experiences that you've had. Maybe they're brand new experiences. Maybe some of them, again, we're all experiencing COVID. And of course, I want to acknowledge all of the incredible uh, protests that are going on. That's all part of our experience right now. We're all coming to it from different angles and perspectives. Those are important things that are still happening right now. How it's important to reflect on that, how that is part of your story now. So, because that's going to make it more engaging. It's going to be meaningful to you, right? So how we are connecting to even what we're experiencing right now is valid and important. You know, I've talked to a few people about uh, grades and how people will look at transcripts and experiences. Uh, you know, maybe people like this summer, you would have planned to be in person with this. You're doing this in a different way. You've adapted. You found another way to still engage with this opportunity, right? Uh, it would have been different in person, but you found another way to engage, and that's important because everyone's going to know that people living through life right now we're all experiencing it now. <laughs> and so they're going to be looking at applications coming in and personal statements. So I think it's absolutely fine to bring in even experiences right now. Okay. Uh, as it says here, don't just regurgitate your resume. This is not your resume. Okay. This is your opportunity to tell your story, to be personal. You may reveal something very vulnerable. You, you're going to have to be honest. So I talked about failure, for example. I always like to tell students that when I was an undergraduate, I was determined to be a zoologist. And then I got into some higher level math and science cl classes and then I decided, well, I love animals, so I'm gonna be a, a veterinarian. So 
I went and uh, observed a, a surgery at a vet clinic, and I passed out. <laughs> I, I just went right out. They had to wake me up with smelling salts. So I knew at that point, okay, this is not the career for me, but it helped me then refocus. Well, what do I really want to do? And I had always been passionate about film, and I, could, I was enjoying my film classes, and I thought, well, maybe I need to refocus here. So I, I took what could have been a really difficult situation, and I refocused my education, and I haven't looked back, and it's been a, a great career for me. Um, but, you know, that's me being honest. Right? I didn't do well in those science and math courses, and then I didn't do well <laughs> in that surgery room. Uh, so I found another path. Now, you could also say, hey, I passed out, but I found a way to overcome that. And because I still was so passionate, I really kind of tested my passion, if you will. And because I wasn't passionate enough to continue with that, I went in a different direction. And that's okay, because you're being honest, right? Because again, this is where you're being honest with yourself is why you want to pursue this career. Why do you want to go to medical school? Why do you want to go to graduate school? There are lots of great reasons to do this, but you have your own story. You have your own reasons for why you're going on this particular journey. And so you need to integrate those into your personal statement. So let's get to the writing process here. So as I said, it should be passionate. You should use descriptive phrases, okay? Go beyond just simply the what, why, and how. I know we had the what and the why earlier with the four W's, but you're going to go beyond that. That's just the starting point. So, for example, you can describe something that you did, the what, then you tell us why, but then you connect it to what you're trying to do, okay? You're going beyond just simply what it is and why, but why it's important to you, why it's part of your goals and objectives with your life, why it connects to this specific program that you're applying to, and think about specific examples. And we're going to have a little exercise for that here in a little bit because, again, sometimes people get way too general in their personal statements because they, and, and again, sometimes you can't think of examples. Maybe you don't have examples yet. I can tell you uh, your graduate or your undergraduate career, there are lots of opportunities out there to create experiences where you're going to have great examples. So engaging with those opportunities on your campus is really invaluable. You know, whether it's attending a lecture by a particular researcher or a doctor and you're like, this person was incredible. I connected with what they're saying. I really am passionate about now what they do. And then I talked to them after and I built up a network and maybe I joined their lab. That's specific, right? Maybe before that you were thinking you were going one way, but then boom, the light went off and suddenly you saw this new pathway because you had this one experience. That, and just be specific with that. That's really important. So I think you've already got some a start on your personal statement, but and I think they've built into the program that you're going to revise it, you're going to edit it, you're going to have your mentor look at it, you're going to have other people look at it, because again, this is a process. You are going to rewrite this personal statement many times, okay, because it's not going to be perfect the first time. There's no doubt about that. It has to be revised. It has to be edited. You want to have multiple people look at it. You want to get good feedback. It's good to get feedback from someone who knows you well and then someone who maybe doesn't know you well because the person who knows you may say, well, you left out this really important part of your life. Whereas someone who doesn't know you may say, I don't really think this is specific enough. I don't really understand why you included this. Um, and then you can say, oh, well, I included this because of this, this, and this personal experience. And then you can edit and revise so that you can make those changes so you can get a good submission. So let's see, we've got, it's one or, or 128, my time central. And again, mindful of time. Uh, I'd like to give you just a little bit of time now to jot down a quick draft. You may already have that so you can revise a little bit of what you have. Uh, but I'm going to give you just 10 minutes here real quick, and then hopefully we can share together for the last few minutes some of the things that you worked on. Um, but uh, again, this is just a draft. I hope you see this as a place of support where you feel comfortable sharing things because I can give you some feedback, that sort of thing. Um, unfortunately, because of this environment, we don't have time to do a, a share with your partner or what have you right now. 
But I just want you to take a few minutes and jot down, for example, I'd love to see what your hook is. I'd love to hear a really good example of a hook, how you plan on pulling the reader into your personal statement. So I'm going to give you this time now to work on that so that then we can share that as a group. So let's take the next 10 minutes to do that. Um, before we do I, I that, a, would you oh, mind if we, uh, we have a couple of questions in the chat. Oh, absolutely. Sorry. I, well, I'm I actually, uh, a big screen. I, I can't for here. Um, you're, you're breaking up. If you can, um, when your internet settles, we'll try speaking now and see if it's if it's smoother. Um, since that the uh, the connection's a little wonky right now, if you guys want to continue with the task, and then when the internet restabilizes, is it is it to uh, Disjointed for everyone, or is it just doc, uh, Dr. Jones's feed? No, it's just him. Okay. Why don't you continue with the task, and when when his internet stabilizes, then we'll come back to the questions. And if you can hear me, I'm going to go ahead and just answer the questions while they're working. Oh. I'll answer them yeah, in. Now. Yeah, you're back now. You you went. You completely yeah, went away. <laughs> I think it's because I switched off of sharing the screen. Sorry about that. Still technological. Uh, learning curve. <laughs> All right. So, um, yeah, I, let me ask. So, uh, everyone can kind of keep working, but maybe you can kind of hear. And if I if I answer a specific question for someone, so yes, we're all experiencing these common experiences, right? That there are a lot of different things, but the more specific you are, is what helps you get into that interview. Okay. And when I say specific, it's what your personal experience is and how that connects to what that specific program is. So. It is very important for you to look at uh, that program, do a lot of research on that graduate program or that medical school to see if they um, there, if there are specific things that they're looking for, that there are highlights that they uh, focus on, if there are specific um, types of research, for example, if there are researchers that you're interested in working with. Those are specific things that distinguish you from others. So. Because someone might just have a very general, I'm interested in this type of program. But if you said, I'm interested in this specific researcher's research, and I have done this research as an undergrad, that will prepare you really well for that next um, uh, level, right? So if you can really target and use specific information from that program, that's going to really distinguish you from other folks to get you into that interview stage. Does that make sense? And memorable. Okay, so I asked you about the hook. That hook is a huge part of making it memorable. Um, so again, think about great trailers that have pulled you in right off of the bat. Right in the first few seconds, you're just engrossed. It's the same thing with a personal statement. Now, I know you aren't all filmmakers or, you know, creative writers or something like that, but you can still think about is there something that when you meet someone and you want to really tell them who you are, okay? Is there an experience from your life that kind of crystallizes who you are as a person? That's invaluable, okay? So, for example, with me, you know, I'll share a little bit. Like, my dad died when I was 16. That definitely changed my trajectory and how I interacted with the university that I went to because my dad actually was a professor at that university I ended up going to. So I had expected to have a lot of preparation, right? I should have been extremely prepared for, for my undergraduate career. But since he died when I was 16, I did lose a little bit of that information. And so I did go in not with the same level that I was expecting to. 
Um, and that definitely, I think, affected my first year or so at college. Um, I, I approached it much differently. So that's an example. I can pull someone in there real quick. Another example I like to give, when I have an intro to film class, I always ask students, um, I always tell them about what my favorite movie is. Because people always ask me, oh, you teach film, what's your favorite movie? And so I tell them, I say, well, that's impossible to answer, but I can tell you a story that explains why I have the career that I have. And I talk about a film called Brazil that I saw when I was 14 years old. And before that time, I had experienced film as a movie, as pure entertainment. But then I had this moment in that theater and I saw that and my brain exploded basically. And I suddenly saw film as an art form as a, something that could be studied. And then I went and saw that film 10 times in the theater. <laughs> okay, so then I'm like, wow, I'm really into this. And that kind of laid the, the groundwork, the foundation for my future career as a film studies professor. So again, that's a personal story where I'm pulling you in, where I can, you can just see, you know, like someone who's 14 years old going into this movie and just being blown away and just totally changing how they perceive something. So that's another way, that's making it hopefully memorable. Um, let's see the next one. So how short is, yeah, 250 words or less, okay, concise and precise. So in 250 words, you may only be able to have one hook, all right? You're just going to pull them right in and then have one or two very specific things that you have accomplished that are preparing you for that career. So again, making sure that the things you select directly connect to that program are vital for something like that. When it's that short, you can't go into to a, a lot of different things that you did. You have to be very specific. So finding one or two very specific things will help you refine that. And again, finding that structure, if you look at the four W's, you just make sure you've hit on all of those. Even in those 250 words, there's a way to do that. And that takes a lot of editing and it takes a lot of revising to get it down to 250 words. You know, we live in this weird world with Twitter now <laughs> and with social media and having things composed in that way. You know, there are certain people who have figured out how to use that short format. And uh, so who knows, maybe you are an expert at Twitter and you can apply that to this. Because again, being short and getting people's attention in a quick way and showing why they should care. Because ultimately that's what you're trying to convince them is that what you are doing is, uh, what you are going to bring to their program is valuable. That you are going to be a great student in their program you're going to bring this knowledge. You're going to be a great graduate. They're going to be able to talk about you as you move on to your career. They're going to ask you for money, <laughs> you know, all of those things. Um, so you have to convince them that you're going to be a good fit for that program. So a lot of them have holistic approaches. You, I'm sure you've heard this term, but again, that's where they look at the whole person. Uh, they aren't just looking at GPA. They aren't just looking at uh, you know, oh, you've done research. Well, research is important, absolutely. I'm the assistant director in the Office of Undergraduate Research. And I see one of our wonderful undergraduate research ambassadors on screen right now <laughs> who could talk even more about that. We may have more, I can't see everyone's name. But, um, you know, research is invaluable. But just doing research to do research is not enough. You have to do research that you can connect to your future career. Um, you have to say specific things that you've learned in that research experience that connect to the letter of recommendation that you're going to get. Those letters of recommendation are another huge part. I'm telling you, personal statement and letters of recommendation are often weighed more than other things now, okay? Because if you can write a good personal statement and you can get good letters of recommendation, it shows that you've gone through all of these experiences and you've developed yourself as a whole student that you sound really good on paper and you've convinced other people to write really good things about you, okay? So that's why they look at those more and weigh those even a little bit more. So, you know, again, if you have, are struggling with finding experiences to talk about, even if you're a senior, okay, there's still plenty of time to go engage with your campus, engage with your community, engage with the world to build on experiences that connect to what you want to do. So, you know, I brought up the example of COVID-19 earlier. I'll bring it up again. There are a lot of incredible opportunities right now to engage with that experience, with social justice. There's lots of crossover there. Again, bring that into who you are because you're a whole person, right? You're not just a scientist. You are a whole person. So, 
you know, if there's a personal experience from that that has changed how you want to do your graduate work or want to uh, pursue a medical career, put that in there. Be personal. Be honest. So th those are things. Uh, let's see. Oh, great. Um, great advice here from uh, Lee Ashley about uh, breaking down the essay prompts, highlight each component, then make sure that you hit on all the points. Absolutely. I can tell you this as a, as a professor as well. When I give a prompt, I always make sure that they've answered all of the prompt. <laughs> you know, and it's very easy when you look at some of these prompts to answer just part of it. Make sure you've answered the whole thing. So this is very good advice to make sure that you are following every single part of it. That is um, really important. I actually have a question. Yeah, sure. All right, so um, you've been talking about it, the hook. When you want to catch on with the hook, is it more, are you trying to get the reader emotional or is it supposed to be factual? Like, how do you, how do you pinpoint on, all right, so you, pin, you talked about the COVID-19, okay. If you wanted to find a cure for COVID-19, that would be, it would be factual and then it would be emotional because it'd be like, you're caring. Or do you want them to have more of a background of you such as emotion like, oh, I feel like, I feel like this would be a great fit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I think emotional. Um, it, it, the fact is that you're doing the research, right? That's a fact, but you, this is your personal statement. So like on a resume or a CV, you would list, okay, I engaged in this research on COVID-19 in this lab for this amount of time. This is what we did. We got published or what have you. That's a fact. But why did you do it? Okay. Maybe it's like I had a personal family member or I had several family members who were severely affected. Maybe you personally had it, right? And that through that experience, it really made you think this is a career that I want to do. Okay. So that's what makes it personal. And emotional. Now, I'm not saying every statement has, um, you know, this that dramatic a connection, right? But you have to connect what it is to what you want to do. So you could say by seeing what is happening with COVID-19, I want to go into uh, viral, be a viral virologist, and see if there's a way that I can study that so that future generations don't have to deal with this. Okay. See how that's more personal than just saying I did this research because we were all experiencing it. I think you can make it more personal. Okay, thank all right. you. All right, absolutely, great question, Augustine. Um, so what if you don't have a specific personal example? Great question. So again, I, I bet you do, okay? You may not be able to think of it right now, but I really feel that there's a good chance that you do because we've all led interesting lives, okay? I really feel like it was, there's something in your life. Now, talk to people. Talk to people about what they think about you, maybe what your strengths are. They may highlight a memory of you and say, talk to your, your family. They may say, oh, yeah, when you were 12 years old, you were obsessed with uh, rhinoceros. <laughs> I say that because my daughter's obsessed with rhinoceroses right now. And so she's super passionate about saving the northern black rhino. She does all this stuff with that. If she keeps with that and goes into you know, zoology and gets her PhD in animal conservation or what have you, that early story suddenly means something. So think back in your past. There's got to be something that connects to why you want to do what you want to do. And again, there's opportunities to go out there. And um, yeah, great point from uh, Bianca. Fantastic point. Faculty members are human. <laughs> They're going to connect to that human emotion. That's a great point. Before I go any further, though, I just want to give Sindhu just a quick moment to uh, tell you about the research ambassadors because she's a wonderful ambassador and she's talked about that. Maybe you could just touch on just a tiny bit about how you can integrate a research experience into a personal statement. Would you mind touching on? I'm putting you on the spot, but I think you could you can do it. I have every confidence. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I'm part of undergraduate research ambassadors at UAB. And basically we're a group of undergraduates that are currently in research labs and we help incoming students or even like any, any year of undergraduates that are trying to get involved into research. So we work with them, have meetings, send them emails and try to figure out like what research lab would fit them best and their interests. So we have like a wide variety of students and so I'm a neuroscience major, but there's also so many other majors such as biomedical engineering or genetics um, friends, like some we even have like public health majors. 
So all of us um, combine, we have a spreadsheet and we figure out what would best work with everyone. And regarding our personal statements, I think with research, you're gonna have so many different breakthroughs, but it's also such a huge part of trial and error. So with research, like I've been working on an experiment for since my freshman year, like since September freshman year, and it's just been a bunch of trial and error. And I feel like from that, we've been able to learn um, just like you're determined, you're passionate about it, but it's like also you're not giving up. And I feel you can incorporate that into your personal statement as well. Thanks, Andrew. Appreciate that. Yeah, definitely. And she's a, a great resource. So you see uh, her there. She's wonderful. And I don't know if we have any other uh, ambassadors here. Um, and uh, so Kristen Bird did ask if I have some examples. Absolutely do. And I will share those with uh, the directors of the program so that they can share those with you. Um, I have some really good ones uh, from UAB that uh, have been written, so I will share those with everyone. All right, I know we're almost uh, to 145 here, but just real quick, does anyone have a hook that they want to share with the group at large? I know I threw that um, uh, out there <laughs> as an early assignment. I know I wanted to answer all these great questions, fantastic questions. Thank you for interacting so much, but does anyone want to share something in the chat room? Uh, a hook that they think is particularly effective. So is this something that we would need to apply to like, say like medical school or whatever our interest is? We, we have to have a personal statement. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, that is correct. It would be for medical school, graduate school. Definitely. Yeah. Um, med uh, yeah. Optometry, dental, they're all going to be looking for a personal statement. Uh, you'll see different lengths, you know, as we heard earlier, some are very short. Some, as I said, they'll give you a page, two pages. But again, you have to be as concise and precise as possible. So, um, and again, the sooner you start writing this, and then you can revise it as your undergraduate career continues, you can find new experiences, you can find research experiences, service learning experiences. There's so many different ways to build on who you are as a human being. Again, that's the holistic approach. And the people that are reading this, they're going to want to hear that you're dedicated, that you're committed to this career, that it's not just simply a check mark, that it's not just simply a, a means to an end, right? That you are passionate. Because research, especially if you're going to grad school, re research requires a lot of perseverance, and, uh, you know, uh, overcoming failure. <laughs> so that's, again, where I can say, hey, if there's something from your past where you failed and you overcame it and that helped who you are as a person, it's fine to share that. Absolutely. Oh, we got a couple here. Excellent. Um, I'm just reading through these. These are great. All right. Thank you for sharing that. Oh, so maybe you can all read this rather than I'll read it out loud. I think, um, good. Okay, so Darrell has something. Very good. Wow. If I can address Yasmin's comments. So, um, contacts that can read or review personal statements. Remember, that's something that we're working through um, with your uh, mentors. So work on that, um, improving that with your mentors and we're happy to, to look at them too. <clears throat> These are some great, some good hooks. Absolutely. I love the one that starts with Mother's Day, Abu Dhabi. Um, yeah, that you see just imagery wise, that's already pulling us in. And someone earlier said, very good word choice and imagery. Again, you know, this is a story, this is your story that you're telling using descriptive words, right? Pulling us in, not just analytical, but this is a subjective, you know, um, and showing those things. So, wow, those are some great examples. Thank you all for sharing those. Those are really great. Well, I want to be mindful of time. Was there anything else that, any other questions or I thoughts? I have one question. I have one more yeah. question. Okay, so when someone is trying to make a hook and say they don't have like a, a backstory, like their parents are both living there, everything's been 
good for them all their life, but they are, but they're passionate about what they want to do. No. How would how would how would they be an attention grabber? Because they can't really get them emotionally, but they can they can say how passionate they are. But everyone's saying how passionate they are. Definitely, and but you'd be surprised how many personal statements, and I've read quite a few that they, it struggles to show that passion. But think about positive experiences too. Maybe there's someone that you heard that you uh, met that you had a class from. Was there a particular mentor in your life that helped inspire you? that helped you decide that this is the career path that you wanted. Uh, you know, research mentors are excellent for that, but it could be someone from the community. It could be a family member. Um, so it doesn't necessarily have to be this story about something that, you know, perceived as a negative, right? But it could be something that's really positive, uh, that, wow, you went through and you, you didn't really know what you wanted to do, but then you heard this or you saw this. You know, I talk about, you know, Brazil is a film and how that just changed my whole perception of what movies could be. So maybe there's something like that. Maybe there's a book. Maybe there's an article. There's lots of ways to talk about it from that way as well. So that's not necessarily, oh, my parent had this condition and so I really want to cure that. Because again, I will say a lot of people do have that and that's wonderful and that's emotional. But again, you have to move beyond that so that it's not just simply this happened in my family, so I want to cure it. It's like, okay, then I've done this, and I've had this experience as an undergrad that connects to that, and now I know for sure that this is what I want to do because I was in this lab, we were able to publish this article, or I had this community engagement experience. Um, you know, I talked to a lot of UAB students, for example, that get involved with service learning and nonprofits, and they learned that, yeah, they were interested in medicine because they love science or what have you, but then they got to know someone in the community and it changed, they just, it, they just blossom and so I'm like, this is why I want to do it. I want to help people like this because th this is something that I can be really passionate about. So engaging in those opportunities can really help form your personal statement so that it's not just one layer, it's deep and that it connects to who you are as a human being because that's what they want to see. You're not just a number, you are a human being who's telling their story. Does that help? All right. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I thought that. Excellent. All right. And, a question and or a comment, if you will. I'm not certain if you took care of this in your talk, but did you talk about journaling? I didn't. Thank you for bringing that up. That is a wonderful thing. So I talked about, you know, seeking out opportunities, but documenting things is invaluable. <laughs> okay. So, Yes, you may have your resume and your CV and you should have that and you should revise it as you experience. But keeping a journal of experiences will really help you pull back and find things to put into your personal statement. Um, because like I said, everyone has a story. I guarantee you everyone has a story. And a journal will help you find what that story is. Because <laughs> there you go, right there, you've got a journal. Um, so maybe, you know, think about just, just writing down what happens during your day, how you're feeling. And I can, get, I can tell you right now with everything that we're all experiencing, journaling is a great way to sometimes decompress and to document what you're feeling and maybe connecting that again and, and repurposing what you want to do in life. Uh, you know, that, that's an important part, that reflection. I talked about that in, in ways connected to service learning, but reflecting on every experience that's valuable really helps you then tell that story because then you know what it meant to you. So maybe you, maybe it could be just even a movie that you saw, right? But you could reflect on that. So, you know, there's, I'm putting out lists of all sorts of movies that people can educate themselves with right now. Um, and that I can educate myself with right now. And I, I find myself almost every day learning something that could, totally change how I interact with students, okay, and with my community. And that's the thing about your personal statement is that you're experiencing life right now. And if you document that, it can absolutely go into your personal statement. So thank you for bringing that up, uh, Carol. You're welcome. Um, Gareth, yeah. we, have a group, we have a group meet with all of us in it. And if you don't mind, can I put your email in there if people want to contact you? Absolutely. Okay. So I'm going to type it in here too. Okay. So everyone's got that. And I know we've gone over time and I was trying to be respectful of time. 
okay. those were all great questions <laughs> yeah thank you so much um i guess we'll end the session here thank you very much for taking the time and i'm sure there's going to be lots more questions it's an evolving thing writing a personal statement it's not one and done as your experiences uh happen then you'll be changing it so hopefully this session plus working with your mentors will help you improve yours and be the best candidate. It's the first, one of the first things we read in admissions. So it's very, very important. So with that, we'll end the session. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone. It was a pleasure. Um, we'll reconvene in uh, just a few minutes for Dr. Young's session. So we'll probably start about five minutes after time, just to give you a chance to take a break. So we'll see you soon. Thank you.